Among the ancient cities on the island of Cyprus were two that now lie below the modern town of Polis Chrysokus on the northwest coast. The earliest named city, Marion, was probably founded in the 8th century BC. After Marion's destruction at the end of the 4th century BC, the city was refounded as Arsinoe, and it remained a prominent urban center on Cyprus into the 16th century. Excavations in Polis, starting in 1885, have revealed hundreds of tombs. The excavations by Princeton University since 1983 have focused on the ancient settlements, revealing houses, workshops, public buildings, temples, and churches. Virtual three-dimensional reconstructions were created of four of these buildings, two each from Marion and Arsinoe, by students in a joint computer science and art and archaeology seminar in the spring of 2012. In antiquity, the coastline was closer to the settled areas on high ground overlooking the bay. From the founding of Marion until the early 5th century BC, a sanctuary in the field called Peristeres was the center of community activity. Its asymmetrical architecture is the result of repeated rebuilding. Upon entry into the sanctuary, the visitor faced a large altar filled with ash and bone that were the remains of feasts and sacrifices. Turning right, one would have walked through a long building. Hundreds of small female figurines with upraised arms were dedicated here in honor of a female fertility goddess. Emerging into the sunlight in front of the main temple, the visitor would have stood amidst a crowd of votives and seen statues and other dedications on display. Only a few people would have entered the house of the goddess. Votives, such as this terracotta female statuette, were ritually killed after the fire destruction of the sanctuary around 500 BC. They were buried in a large pit east of the sanctuary. This fire preserved many objects on the floors of the buildings. On a ridge closer to the shore was another sanctuary in the field called Maratheri. This sanctuary was especially prominent in the 5th and 4th centuries BC. The symmetry of the temple architecture provides evidence for its reconstruction. Tiles found around the forecourt suggest that the colonnades were roofed with terracotta tiles. Whether the main temple had a flat-thatched or pitch-tile roof is unknown. The foundations, steps, and colonnade are clearly defined. The temple's height is reconstructed based on a nearly three-meter-tall colossal male statue that stood in a small room inside the main temple. When the temple was destroyed in the 4th century BC, the statue fell and broke into several pieces, one of the legs remaining near where it once stood. Just before this destruction, the people of Marion built a wall in an effort to secure their city. Even so, in 312 BC, the Egyptian army raised the city of Marion and burned this temple to the ground. After the refoundation of the city around 270 BC as Arsinoe, another prominent building was constructed on the bluff overlooking Chrysokou Bay. Used throughout the Hellenistic period from the 3rd to the 1st century BC, this porticoed building may have had a military function. A good supply of water was available in a cistern below the floor. Based on the proportions of Greek architectural orders, the reconstructed Doric columns around the painted southern courtyard provide evidence for its height.
The proportions of two polychrome ionic columns, reconstructed from many fragments, suggest that the northern courtyard was twice the height of the southern one. While the southern courtyard was painted, hinting at its public function, the northern one may have been a private, barracks-like area with many small rooms. Heavily robbed of its fine building blocks in later centuries, its southernmost portico was covered completely during the construction of a church. In the 6th century of the late antique period, two Christian basilicas were constructed in Arsinoe. In addition to one built over the Hellenistic building, another was constructed further south at the center of the city. This church reached its most elaborate form in the 7th century, when it featured a tiled and timber roof, a portico on its south side, an arcaded entrance hall, a mosaic at the east end, and gypsum floors. In typical Byzantine style, the basilica had three aisles that were separated by colonnades with varied capitals, such as this Corinthian one. Paintings would have decorated the walls below the clerestory windows. At a later period in the southern aisle, individuals were buried with their valuables. There were artificial and natural light sources. Knowledge of still standing Cypriot basilicas aided the reconstruction of this church. This church and all the other buildings found by the Princeton team were preserved only as high as their foundation stones. All the three dimensional models of buildings from Marion and Arsinoe could be reconstructed based on those foundations and objects, such as architectural sculpture found in the excavations. Uncertain details remain about each of these buildings and present challenges for both archaeology and computer science. These digital models can be used to test out ideas and may be modified based on new research about the buildings of Marion and Arsinoe.